This design came from Boxmaster Ray Key, who passed away in 2018. But back in 2009, in my early days of wood turning, I had an opportunity to attend an all-day wood turning demonstration by Ray Key by the Classic Center City Wood Turners over in Athens, Athens, Georgia. Uh, I didn't learn learning skills. They didn't teach learning skills in uh, elementary, middle, or high school uh, back then like they do now. But somewhere along the way, I learned to take notes. Uh, before I got to got to college and I take notes on every single demonstration. So here's a picture that I made uh, I drew of that clamshell box by Ray Key back in 2009 and you can see the ratios that we're going to follow is, is pretty much his 45 percent on the top and 55 percent on the bottom and I watched the Jimmy Clues do a very similar box a few years uh, later. Here's a picture of his in my demo and uh, by the way, here's a picture of that box that Ray Key did during that all-day demo. I made a picture of it. So you need to locate some suitable wood. This is a piece of hard maple I've had in my shop for a number of years, so I feel like it is uh, dry enough for a, a, for a box. Most any kind of hard wood will, will work well. That first box I showed you was out of ambrosia maple. So we I cut this block out on a bandsaw as shown here using a couple of job aids as shown here, a couple of uh, circle templates, uh, acrylic template I made to position the center on a roughly shaped uh, round round blank. So we're going to get this speed up. It's fairly round so we're going to get this speed up. It's a good size blank but we're going to get up to oh, maybe 1, 1100. Anchoring the tool on my hip the spindle roughing gouge is going to turn into a round cylinder. Tighten it up. Moving my body, not my arms. Okay, I've sketched out a diagram, uh, both in millimeters and, and imperial. Uh, I've got a better little clip, but basically we got a blank about four and a quarter inches long and about a four and a quarter inches uh, across. We've got a little bit of waste wood at the top and the bottom as well as room for our uh, tenons and, and to uh, cut out the, the middle blank. Mark the tenon, and from experience I know that if I do this, I'll get pretty close to my normal jaws, and then I can gauge it from the other side. I use parallel jaws, so I don't have to worry about a dovetail. I'm going to make this about a quarter of an inch thick. Gauging this based on that. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and put a check. At this point in time, you evaluate which end is going to be the top and which end is going to be the base. Uh, you want the the prettiest wood or the most figured wood to be on the top. Uh, that's the part that has this little bit of a, a crack that even if this comes off uh, I think I'll still be able to salvage it without without any uh, problem. So let's go ahead and put this in a chuck. Put the base in there first. Well I made that tenon way too big but for this particular box it's not going to make any difference. It's going to hold it just fine. It's going to be small enough. There won't be any vibration. Okay. Now I, I'm going to roughly lay out where the uh, the dimensions. So I've got room for about oh, I figured close to a quarter of an inch on each side. Okay. Now it's a pretty thick block of wood. Um, I could waste, I could part this off, but I think in order to 
you know, the other option is to go over to the bandsaw and put it in a jig and cut it. I think I'm going to go ahead and just part it off, recognizing that there might be some some loss of grain grain pattern match. So I'm going to use this uh, Sorby parting tool with a flute in it because it's got a long handle, gives me some leverage for something this this big, which I normally wouldn't want to part off that small. So let's turn that down. I'm just outside that line. I get down about a half inch or so. And come back, make another part. Go down and keep the part back and forth. Just a little bit. And I'll probably just unplug this line off. got it close enough down to a little over an eighth of an inch to just spin off like that. Bye bye Maisie. She's not much of a shop dog. She hears the machines and she runs. So here's what this is going to look like. So we're going to have a recess a little over five millimeter deep, uh, probably six millimeter. Then the tenon is going to be about five millimeters so we'll have just a uh, plenty of room there. And it looks like the wall thickness here is about about six millimeter, right at a quarter of an inch, which because of that figure there, I got a little bit of tear out. Close the flute almost at nine o'clock. Just kind of scraping action. Brace it with my little finger. Nicely. That was better than a scrape on this uh, somewhat punky wood. And I'm going to go ahead and just open up the middle a little bit. box scraper to come in. Okay, so now I can use that to kind of gauge whether I'm going in there deep enough. Now I'm using a box scraper to to come in there. The box scraper has got an angle here of less than 90 de degrees. It's not a negative rake scraper. It's a traditional scraper. It's got a bevel on this side and this side. And it's less than 90 degrees so I'm not scraping in the front when I'm scraping along the side. And I'm going to come in where the handle just elevated just a little bit, cutting just about on center. I'm going to line up this edge with the, with the uh, bedway. Just a millimeter or so more to go. I'm going to start hollowing. I've got just a tiny little shoulder here, so I've got about a, a, a quarter of an inch thickness through here, although it's a little thicker at the bottom because this is an ingrain piece of wood, so you've got to leave it a little thicker at, at the bottom. So I can just go ahead and start uh, shaping. I'm going to come. I'm going to use this box scraper to mark that little bit of a lip. That. Okay, now I'm going to use a, a half inch spindle gouge to hollow out a drill to mark the depth. So first I'm going to make a tiny little divot. Based on my, my diagram, uh, to the bottom to the top is 34 millimeter. I want at least, uh, probably, I'm going to say 8 millimeter at the bottom uh, to give me a little more room because I probably want to concave this in just slightly so it'll sit. Matter of fact, I think I may go up to uh, 9 or 10 millimeter right here. 
So let's start with, with 10. That means I need to go uh, 34 millimeter minus 10, so I'm going to drill this down right here, 24 millimeter. About an inch. Push in. A little bit off center. So for what we're accomplishing here, it won't matter. So, with this flat here, I'm going to start from the center and sweep out, and I'm going to stop when I get to that, that shoulder. wax, get a liberal amount on here and just rub it in there. And this will stiffen up the fibers hopefully so I can get a clean clean cut. I'm going to use a cupped carbide scraper uh, from Mike Hunter. This tool has got me out of trouble with punky wood before. And it is just does a really fine finishing cup, un, uh, cut. Unlike a flat carbide, this is a 3 16th inch cupped carbide. It doesn't scrape, it slices. And the profile of the tool is such that if I hold it flat on the tool rest, it's slightly dipped and slightly twisted. And that ought to help. I'm going to have to go in the middle. Any type of sanding sealer will probably do just fine, uh, shellac, but uh, I like this, this Mylans because it dries so very fast. It, it just does not take any time at all. And so... This recess. We're not going to sand that recess. You want to keep that cut clean and not change the diameter with sanding if you can avoid it. Okay, to sand the inside, I like to use uh, power sand for something like this. I like to lubricate the sanding uh, because it, it gives a better finish. It runs cooler, but mostly it, it traps a lot of that small stuff that it, you would otherwise breathe. So I'm going to go through all the grits. After I've sanded up through the various grits up to about 400, because I can't buff on the inside, I'm going to use this this sanding, uh, this abrasive, abrasive paste to really polish the inside. Rub it in real good. Get that outside surface. Okay, now that I got it polished up, I've got measured the inside. I'm going to transfer the inside to the outside and mark a scotch more room for the bottom. Then I'm going to go ahead and take a part parting cut and start that shaping. This is going to be where the parting cut's going to go. To the Come down, take another pass to which part. Just the slightest corner off here.
bottom out, put in the lid. And on the lid, we've got to do that recess of the tenon, rather, that'll just fit in here. So we're going to mark that five millimeter. Okay, I've got a nice suction fit that ought to do just fine for us to do the final finishing. So let's let's bring up tailstock support and start removing that waste. And let me double check the inside diameter. Oops. That's how deep it is. So I need to come behind here at least eight millimeter. Eight, eight, nine millimeter. So let's just draw that circle and evaluate it one more time. I'm going to use a parting cut that I know is going to be rough, but I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room to clean off any tear out. Take this off, this excess, use this heating and parting tool. almost 45 degrees by 40, 40 degree bevel so that means it needs the finished cuts needs to be uh, almost 45 degree across my body so I'm bringing this around I've got to make sure I keep bringing this around to make this round sanding while I can while I've got this support and I've got just a little bit of uh, some rough edges here that I'm going to just take my my skew and just profile that a little bit care to get there. I've got a little thickness here I can, get, I can play with. So, let's, let's bring this 
this in just a little bit. I got a little bit of a ridge there. And I'll just scrape this. I want to get a little bit of a profile in there. I think the easiest way to do that is with a negative break scraper. Small one to kind of just work in the corner there. Okay, let's get rid of this top waste. I've drawn a line right here. I think you can see it. That's actually the outs that that's the very where the very top ought to be. But I'm going to go ahead and remove this waste first. I'm going to do that by getting the speed up a little bit and just come on down. there but I got a little bit of a transition I need to worry about so I'm going to do that again with a skew. And I want the fibers to tear out here so I've got to cut away from the end. Now we got a little bit of bump there, and that's fine. One more pass. And then sand that. Sand that round. Stick the stock out of the way. And I'll do that off camera. Okay, after moving the waste, sanding up through 400, now I'm going to use a little of that abrasive paste, coating it liberally. not a bad fit. I'll loosen this just a little bit, but now we've got to uh, finish the lid. Let's go with the 27 millimeter for the inside. That's how deep we need to hollow this. One thing I forgot, um, because this box is backwards from others, and this is the base, actually, I need to concave this just very slightly right here. Maybe put a couple of beaded rings on it. So let's do that. Now that i got it uh, sanded and flattened here a little bit with the negative rig scraper, I'm just going to put a couple of tiny little, little V grooves decorated to decorate it. The design. Chucks are very effective. I looked around to find something and I already had this piece of soft pine block. I don't know what I use this for. <laughs> Doesn't matter because I'm going to take this off and cut a recess there. <laughs> Conservative, so we're going to do it on the inside and then sneak up on it.
try and pop this out easily with a chisel. I'm just going to come around and just, oh yeah, it'll free up. I had another technique if this didn't work. 